All right, let's take a look at the pirate stack. So, pirate stack right now probably needs some work. Let's see, we can add a grasping scoundrel. Could add some uh, hoarders, poisoners certainly can get in there. Could add more moments of craving. Could add a border. Right now the pirate stack is probably just a bad version of Monorad. But uh, I'll still give it a shot here. I think we want to stay on theme. Could get greedy with this Chupacabra. Right, guess we have two Daring Buccaneers already. Could get a third one. Alright, definitely one more Firebrands. Not a Rigging Runner. Not a Firebrand. Could add more Bravados. Could add more Magma Sprays. Could add more Trailblazers. Let's max out the Lightning Strikes. Cannonade could be okay as a one-off. Um, could add a repeating barrage, I guess. Could play Hazoret, but I uh, think we'll stay with uh, the theme here. We are playing uh, one copy of Philanery Storm. She's already in the deck, I think. I think it's part of the starter deck. Let's see if we have any uncommons. Could add another captain. Actually, not a great card, but we'll see. Ooh, we've got a cut to ribbons. That's something that uh, I could add. Foul flagship is interesting. Treasure map is pretty thematic, but not really for this deck. Could add another Pirate's Cutlass. Already have the banner. So I guess those are the payoff cards for being a pirate deck. Besides some of the pirates themselves. And then our mana base, we could add some more Ramina Bruins. Could add another Cinder Barons. And we'll see here. I'll just add a bunch of random stuff. And then we can make some cuts. Alright, so let's take a look at our deck. So, one drops, we've got Buccaneer, Firebrand, Magma Spray, Rigging Runner, so lots of ones, that's nice. I guess we also want this Unclaimed Territory in this version. Um, do we want to March of the Drowns? Seems okay against control decks, a nice two for one. Then the Poisoner is good, Captain is good, Freebooter is good. Could run this Moment of Craving, it's very good against the red decks, obviously. Um, we already have some Magma Sprays, maybe a mix of both is good enough. We also have Lightning Strikes. I think we can cut the Abrade and play Lightning Strike instead. One Walk the Plank. It's gonna be pretty tough on our mana, but it is nice to have a card that can take out larger creatures as well. One Bravado could be okay, could see cutting that as well. Send some two drops Pirates. Random Swashbuckler, some Captains, Border, Forerunner. So all these cards look playable. I think we can cut the Ravager. Alright, so we've got quite a few cuts we need to make. Let's see our land count. 28, that's probably at least 4 too many. So let's cut those first. One if near that lands to Ramina Pruins seems about right. Don't think we want to go all the way. Just because it's pretty painful against the red deck. And then eight black versus. Don't think we want a cycling desert here. So we've got eight red versus ten red. I think that makes sense. So now we have 24 lands. 
I know that technically because of the mulligan rule or the uh, the way the opening hand algorithm works on Arena, you should maybe be playing 22 lands in your aggro decks. But I'm gonna go with how I would build this in paper. And we do want to get up to quite a bit of mana for the neckbreaker, the banner. So I think 24 lands is okay. And then we still need to make 14 cuts, so that's quite a bit. Alright, so... I think we get rid of these moments of craving. And a walk the plank. Could see cutting the march of the drowned. What's that sweeper that doesn't hit pirates? That's a uh, fiery cannonade. We've got one in the deck. I think it's fine to keep one. Very good against other creature decks like vampires or merfolk. Forerunner is actually not that great. It can grab a neckbreaker or captivating crew. But I'm not really a fan of the card. I think we are fine without it. And maybe the border is also not that exciting. Although at this point we're pretty light on 3 drops. I guess we do have the Cutlass to put on our cheaper creatures, so that's fine. Flagship is fine, Barrage seems okay. Cannonade and Lannery Storm is good. So still 8 cuts we need to make. I'm actually not a fan of the Darfleet Captain, even though it is on color. And it should be good. Maybe it's good enough. Let's take a quick look at our curve. Lots of 2s. And not much else. Which makes sense. Bit high on the creatures. So let's see, which, which two drops can we live without? Don't think we need the bravado. Can maybe cut a trailblazer. Think four lightning strike is reasonable. One swashbuckler seems kind of random. And it's not going to be easy for us to get up to 10 permanents, so I can see cutting that one. Still 5 cuts. Maybe 3 scoundrels is too many. And 3 rigging runners is also quite a lot. So 3 cuts left. I think we still cut some 2 drops if we can manage uh, Fathom Fleet Firebrands I'm actually a fan of just because you do encounter quite a few control decks and then you can just use the activated ability a bunch but I mean it's not the best 2 drop ever I think it's close between the Trailblazer and the Firebrand Yeah, the Forerunner is nice when you can chain them together, but it's kind of slow. I'm actually not a big fan of the Captivating Crew. Since it's so slow, it dies to a Lightning Strike. Now everyone has had the time to unlock all their Lightning Strikes. And uh, now we don't have the uh, Forerunners to search up the Captivating Crew, so it kind of loses some value there as well. Uh, okay. And then... Two cuts left. I think I like the cutter ribbons. So how much spot removal do we have? We've got... Well, the firebrands kind of. Magma spray, two copies. We've got... Four lightning strikes, so that's six. Cannonades, kind of seven, eight. So, yeah, it's probably fine to have the cutter ribbons. I think we do want all the cutlasses and the flagship. Maybe cut one Dire Fleet Captain. Although maybe it's better than the, the Firebrand, but it is more difficult on our mana. So I'm not sure. I think I'm going to cut one of them. And then one more cut. Could cut the March of the Drowned. But then we're 
not gonna have a great time against control decks. Uh, it's probably okay to cut it here. And then maybe we can go back. Alright, sure. Let's try this. Alright, this hand seems acceptable. Hopefully this fiery cannonade is going to be good. Up against Swamp. So we could go turn one Firebrand. It's probably fine. Turn on Firebrand, turn two Firebrand. They're both Firebrands, apparently. And then uh, turn three we can maybe go Sinner, Barons plus Lightning Strike. Black-white, Vampire, so Fiery Cannonade looking good. I think we showed them the Ramina Prunes, make them think we're on the red deck. And I don't think we attack with a Firebrand since we want to Fiery Cannonade the Zealot anyways. Sacred Cats, alright. Opponent probably feeling pretty good now that they have their Sacred Cat against the Mono Red deck. I mean, it's still fine against the Pirate deck as well. Alright, Swamp is nice. So, what now? If we attack with a Firebrand or opponent double blocks, we could use a Firebrand to kill the Sacred Cat. But we can't want the Firebrand in play still to go with the Neckbreaker next turn. So I think what we do is play Mountain, say go, not show the Swamp yet, and then next turn we can, well, we can end of turn the Fiery Cannonades, wipe the board, and then next turn go Swamp, Neckbreaker, hit them for a whole bunch. So our hope is that our opponent plays a bunch of stuff that dies to Cannonade here. Blue mana as well, opponent going deep. Hmm, our opponent's not playing anything. That kind of goes against our plan. So what now? Do we still go for it? Could play it slow. And not play the cannonade yet, wait a, a couple turns to set it up. But then we're not doing much in the meantime, and our opponent's gonna know we're red-black. Since we're gonna have to play one of these lands. So sure. The problem now is that they could have a removal spell up for the Darfleet Nightbreaker. Yep, there it is. Oh well, we still get to get in for three, I guess. But we are also flooding out a bit. So this one's not looking great. For the pirates. So this is where we want to find one of our artifacts. Fell flagship, pirate scutless, or the five mana anthem effect. Excellence binding on the firebrand. Well... I guess we have more Firebrands in the deck than Fathom Fleet Firebrands. Opponent doesn't get back the Sacred Cat, interesting. Uh, yeah, let's attack. I guess... Oh, I guess I should have... Uh, I messed up. I should have played the Swamp first if we wanted to double activate Rigging Runner. That's what I was thinking there. Oh well, so we just get in for three, play the Rigging Runner, play Cinder Barons, and then uh, get in for more damage next turn.
opponent with 6 mana. Still pretty confused about their deck. Another Ixalan's Binding. It's got to target the Firebrand. Nope, goes for the Rigging Runner. But the Firebrand can do so much more damage. What are they doing? So here we can activate the Firebrand three times, or we can activate it twice, keep up the Poisoner, or play the Poisoner right now. I think we want to play the Poisoner right now, so we'll use it twice. And this only pumps attacking pirates, which is why we have to do it now. Alright, bonus at 7. We have 5 points of burn between the Ruins and the Lightning Strike, so if they can't gain life or find blockers, then I guess they're in trouble. Still don't know what's going on. Gideon of the Trials, okay. Defend yourself. It's gonna plus on the Firebrand. And now they get back Sacred Cat, or they're just ignoring it. I guess what our opponent has is maybe a, an Anointed Procession deck, and they're waiting for the Anointed Procession to show up before they embalm the Sacred Cat. But I don't think that's going to work out too well. And I think I attack my opponent here. Kind of tells them that uh, we might have some burn in hand, but I think it's the correct play here. All right, bonus at five, so two. We are just having lethal here, so we can activate Ramina Ruins and Lightning Strike. Opponent does have three mana up, so I think we do this in their upkeep in case they have Moment of Craving. Then they have to play the Moment of Craving in their turn. And if they make a move here, they're dead. Alright, nice. So let's make sure to tap our mana correctly. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, we somehow got there. Swashbuckling. Don't, don't think we're playing that one. Alright, the sand seems acceptable. Probably leading with the Scoundrel here, although the advantage of going Firebrand first is that next turn we can Scoundrel plus Magma Spray, since we are kind of taxed on the red mana. And I guess this does get in for two in... So it does the same amount of damage as the Scoundrel would, so I think this makes sense. Since the Scoundrel does two damage by turn two, this also does two damage by turn two. And everyone's happy. And now we still have Magma Spray up. A land would be nice next turn. Get to curve into Captain Lannery. Dusk Legion Zealot is going to get Magma Sprayed, I think. Come on, land. Untap land. Alright, that's not too bad. So, we do get wrecked by a gold on the mice here if we play the Poisoner, but I think... We probably get ranked by Golden Mice either way, so let's run out a Poisoner, get in our extra point of damage. Yep, that's a pretty convincing third land into Golden Mice. Whenever your opponent, like, quickly plays their third land and then makes an action, you know it's gonna be the Golden Mice. So, I guess we got punished a little bit there. Maybe we weren't that dead if they 
just golden demise or two creatures and we flash in the poisoner end of turn we're in a better spot but i don't know our opponent played a field of rune on turn two so maybe they just didn't have the double black pirate scutless isn't bad if they have moment of craving we're in trouble here but that's true no matter what Hopefully they just have an Asa scatter up. Alright, opponent's not instantly killing Lannery. So who knows? Cycling a sensor, sure. Activating treasure map, sure. So now we can use both treasures and lightning strike our opponent's face to get in for maximum damage. Make a red. And gotta make the green mana here. So not a bad attack here. Bones at two. And there's Mr. Scarab God himself. Who's gonna meet Cuts and Magma Spray. Well, this went well. Aw, oh, come on. They, they didn't even let us sacrifice the treasure. That's rude. We ranked up with Black Rat Pirates. And get an Embalmer's Tools for our troubles. This sounds good. Turn one Buccaneer, turn two Captain. Alright, so here, next turn we can't go Firebrand plus Rigging Runner, so we have an actual decision to make. So next turn we most likely just want to go Swamp into Dire Fleet, because it's the most mana efficient play. So what does that mean? Do we play the Firebrand or the Buccaneer? Suppose we play the Buccaneer. In case our opponent plays like a Dusk Legion Zealot, we can at least attack into it. And then what do we reveal? I guess the Firebrand reveals the least amount of information. And also maybe your opponent thinks we're on the Mono Red deck. For whatever that's worth. Opponent with an Opt. blue whites. Alright, we did pick up a mountain so we could go Firebrand and Rigging Runner here but still feels like playing the Captain is better unless we want to play around a uh, an Essence Scatter or a Sensor I suppose. I think we do play the Captain. Get censored. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's pretty likely that they have something there. But uh, the captain loses a lot of value if you if you wait on them, since you want to be attacking with your creatures. So if we play the captain turn later, then all of a sudden he uh, gets a lot worse. So that's why I wanted to play him on turn two, even though he was probably getting countered. I think our opponent has a cycling card in hand here. Yep. Four, 
Four mana, nothing, okay. Don't mind the spots. Run out of scoundrel. Resolves. Play Cinder Baron, say go. So if they can't make a big stabilizing play next turn, like a Regal Caracal, I do like our chances. Not gonna Lightning Strike quite yet, since we might have to maybe combine that with the Magma Spray. And wanna make the opponent feel safe when they're at 12, when in reality they're at 9. Alright, still only single white, so don't need to play around Settler Wreckage. Makes it easier. Treasure map, sure. It's just on tap. Go to attacks. And I'll play my land here, I think. Say go. Opponent needs to find an answer to the board. And they're at virtual 3 life. There's double white. And yep, there's a big kitty. Okay. That's annoying, but I think we can manage. So, we can Lightning Strike the Caracal itself, Magma Spray one of the cat tokens and just attack with our 2-2s. Two Thing that makes sense. Definitely Magma Spring one of the cat tokens. Question is, do we keep the Lightning Strike in case we top deck another one? I guess we don't have a ton of expensive cards we can draw into, so waiting on the Lightning Strike might be okay in case we top deck another one, then it's easy, we can just kill the opponent. Could get punished if we draw one of our 4 or 5 mana cards. Think I'll untap. So let's kill this one. And attack with our tutus. Don't think we want to trade the scoundrel there. Bones likely to block. If they don't, they would die to the ramming up runes. If they don't block, they could also have another caracal in hand, which is bad news for us. And I think I'm going to keep the ramming up runes in hand here. Don't want to show them that we have it. So our hope is that if they do have another Caracal, they don't attack with a cat token they have in play. But that seems unlikely. Hoping they don't have the other Caracal, and then we should be okay. That's also uh, pretty effective. Bone is now back up to 9. Hmm, kind of got punished there for not playing out the Ramina Ruins. Can attack 4-4, four, four. and then the question is do we play out the desert or do we cycle it? I think we cycle this actually, since we can find some pretty good ones off the top. That's not one of those. Opponent has a one mana card. Is it a slash of talents? Or is it just a cycling card? Alright, they take it. I'm gonna still not play out to Ramina Prunes. Can uh, track the opponent's approach here. Uh, 
All right. So now if the opponent blocks one of our 2-2s, two they would take 2, gain 1, go to 4 life. If we attack with everyone, they take 3 down to 2. So I think we attack with everyone here in the hopes that they don't have anything. We have been flooding out a little bit here, unfortunately. Alright, they did have, in fact, a Slash of Talons. So, do we now play out the Ramina Pruins? Still don't think we do. Opponent says go. I'll attack. Cast out, okay. And a cancel. Bones has it all. Got four turns here for the approach. Let's see, four mana. Alright, I guess I play out the Ramina Prunes now. And I will use it, even though we do have some deserts that could combine to still kill the opponents. We do have also some expensive cards that would require all our mana next turn. Alright, so two, two more turns here. Yeah, that Slash of Talons kind of did it. Don't think we could have done much different. I guess had we played the Ramina Prunes that one turn and then play the Desert, sacrifice the Desert and then play Ramina Prunes or sacrifice the Ruins, we would have had lethal. But it's hard to say. Just a hard cast Buccaneer. Sure. Two cards in hand for the opponents, approach on top, so next turn they win. If their two cards are not removal spells, then I guess we have a shot. I mean, if the opponents had a draw spell, they would have cast it by now. Unless, of course, the draw spell costs four mana, in which case they couldn't also cast the approach. Alright, opponent says go. Guess we freebooter in case of settled wreckage. What do you have? Two lands. All right, cool. Guess we win. Another one? Really? What what are the odds on that? We've got two embalmers tools in the span of three games. This hand is pretty creature light and removal heavy. So control deck would be bad news. But we've got lands and spells, so I'm gonna keep is that 4-0 for pirates? Uh, haven't really been keeping track, but yeah, something like that. Opponent with mountain. Maybe we should have considered magma spray more there, since if they're on a the red deck, we want a magma spray here. Kind of uh, automatically played my cinder barons, but the opponent has a slow start, so that's nice. So this ends okay against the red deck. Doesn't really have an answer to Hazoret. But uh, we have plenty of answers for the other creatures. A hard cast Buccaneer. 
Sure. So I'm gonna run out the Poisoner and then in our turn we can answer the Buccaneer. With this a neat little Magma Spray. Could keep the Magma Spray but I kind of want to play the Captain here as well. And I'm fine if our opponent hits us with the and crop crasher for a turn. I can live with that. Alright, so not a not a bad draw here. Opponent says go. Well, they're likely to have a removal spell, so I don't think we run out the neckbreaker pre-combat since that likely just dies. And instead let them use the removal spell on the captain and then play the neckbreaker. And uh if they don't have anything, we're also in a good spot, so don't think we need to get greedy. Alright, looks like they might take it. No? Alright, there we go. And I will just run out the Neckbreaker here, just to be mana efficient and put a creature in play. Alright, so that's dead. But our opponent does nothing. This is a nice draw. So now they need a lightning strike. Magma spray no longer does it. And we're somehow pressuring the red deck. So we could just play the Firebrand, move the Cutlass over. Rather than just attack with the Poisoner. I think that makes sense. And then if they kill the Firebrand, we still have the 2-2 two -two over the 1-1. One -one. And they should wait until we attack. Alright, they're actually killing the 2-2, two -two, so that's fine. Means we get to get in for more damage now. Now the Firebrand does die to Magma Spray, but that's okay. Got 6 points of burn, so if they take another 3 they're dead. And Hazard ain't gonna save him. And then the Ribbons can also do some damage. Opponent just stuck on one red, which is why they weren't able to deploy their hand. But uh, yeah, sometimes you get punished for those colorless lands. So this should be game. Pirates with a nice w little uh, win streak here. And our opponent scoops it up. They didn't even want to see the other lightning strike. I guess we also had the ribbons in the graveyard, which maybe could uh, do enough. A needle tooth raptor. It's actually somewhat playable. All right, let's do a last one with the pirate deck. Hopefully, we can go unbeaten with the pirate deck. Hand seems okay. Nice mix of threats and answers, and even a cutlass, which shines against uh, more controlling decks. Opponent taking their time, they keep. So we could go turn one scoundrel, but I think we want to run out the baron, so next turn we can go buccaneer plus scoundrel. Otherwise we're playing this buccaneer on three, which is way too late. Opponent with Swamp. Next turn we can play Cutlass if they play a Dusk Legion Zealot. Opponent says nice. Nice. Alright, so if they have Moment of Craving, that would be unfortunate. So I guess we put the Cutlass on the Scoundrel. 
which is the least valuable creature. They don't have it. Take five. Opponent on mono black. All right, it's a grind. So, if they have a uh, planes next turn, they could kill both creatures, or exile even. So that would be unfortunate, but uh, for now, we'll get in. So, all right, opponent has nothing. We'll keep getting in there. And they're at a virtual 3 life. And looks like they're just dead. Even have to discard to hand size their opponent just stuck on one color here. Not the most competitive game, but the pirates don't care. They're just here to pillage and plunder. Take the W's. Looks like they were some sort of vampire deck. Oh well. Yar. So that was a successful run with the pirate tribe. It's time to let them rest for their next battle. Alright, which decks do we wanna try next? Play some red deck wins. I also wanna thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.